I will talk about, I guess, I spoke, I've made, I made a video on it earlier, so I won't necessarily speak on it too much. But, um, you know, basically, uh, I was saying uh, short the pound or I, my bias was to short the pound. And um, for those of you that may have missed it was um, the fact that fundamentally we, we know what we know to be true is this is that um inflation right rises right if that's inflation then central banks will typically hike rates right so they will hike rates now hiking rates is again and i use the word typically and usually right because it's not necessarily always set in stone there are reasons why um some you know typical fundamentals don't necessarily have the desired effect on a currency's appreciation or depreciation and this is one of those scenarios and so because we have to understand that gdp yeah gdp is a factor in the ability for the um the, the central bank to kind of hike rates or or a hike in rates has to be supported by rising gdp right Gr a growing economy yeah so inflation puts pressure so remember we've got the two percent target yeah so inflation puts pressure on the central bank to hike rates but also you have to have a growing economy for to be able to support those hikes yeah and one of the difficulties and the conundrums that central banks have, yeah, in, in stagflation for any of you and all of you that have done the, you know, the short course and test um, and answering the questions um, is, is the fact that stagflation is very, very, very difficult to, um, uh, to uh, I guess, navigate for this very reason, right? Because in stagflation, you have rising inflation, but you have, um, um, uh, I guess, contracting uh, GDP, right? So what is the central bank to focus on? Do they focus on inflation? Yeah. Or do they focus on GDP? What would you, what would you focus on? Right. If you, if you, if you don't hike rates, yeah, if you're if you're looking to hike, hold, or cut, right? The question is, if you're hike, holding, or cutting, yeah, what are the consequences for, let's say, for your, I, I would say cutting is definitely out of the question. So let, let's say the, the two options that central banks generally have, yeah, are holding or hiking. So let's start with 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 holding rates. If they hold rates, yeah, what does that do to what do you think would happen to inflation if they hold rates? Would inflation go higher? Do you think inflation would go higher or do you reckon it would? Uh, so Mr. Diligent says inflation would get out of control. Marianne says higher inflation. Higher, yeah, yeah, pretty much everyone's on, on the money, right? And because obviously, if, it, if inflation is above their 2% target, and they're not doing anything about it, generally, you should see inflation, you know, go higher, right? So what is the, 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 the effect of higher inflation? What are you seeing right now, when it comes to the economy, wherever you wherever you're living in the world, because I think, you know, a, a few people... A few people were speaking about this yesterday in the group and, you know, when it comes to prices. So let's just talk about living standards. If, if you know, currently, you know, wherever you are in the world, there's a there's a, a cost of living, I guess, if you want to call it a crisis. But, you know, energy's up, petrol's up, you know, um, uh, 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 business and uh, borrowing and lending costs are up. You know, everything is more expensive, right? They're, you know, if inflation is you know, 9% at the moment in the UK, things, you know, cost 9% more um, than they did last year, right? So from that perspective, yeah, from that perspective, there's an issue there, right, when it comes to um, uh, inflation. 
And the direct effect that that has on, for example, a growing economy is going to be the fact that people are going to have less money in their pockets to spend, which then affects businesses, right, and slower growth. That's exactly it, Mr. Diligence. So Mr. Mr. Diligence says people have less money to spend in slower growth in the economy. Yeah, and because the knock-on effect is people aren't going to take as many chances, right? People aren't going to spend. And when I say chances, I'm talking about people are not going to necessarily invest in um, in things. They'd, they'd rather just play, you know, play safe. Think about yourself. Have you got money to, you know, start putting into uh, the, you know, the stock market, for example, right? You would rather spend the money on, you know, shopping and food and travel, right? You haven't got enough money, say you, but not necessarily you in particular, but people generally wouldn't, you know, we're going to go on less holidays, right? So that's going to affect, you know, tourism. People have got less money to spend on, on things like, you know, clothes and things like that, right? So that's going to affect retail. So it's affecting businesses directly, which then has a negative effect on GDP, yeah? So that's what happens if a central bank doesn't uh, um, high rates or looks to hold rates, right? Inflation goes out of control, it directly affects GDP. And so what you'll end up having is it might be start exacerbating GDP to the point where, you know, it might accelerate the, the downturn, right? If you, if you don't. So then now let's look at, for example, what happens if they high rates. Yeah. So if they high rates, what should happen to inflation? Should inflation go higher or should want to go down? In theory. Yeah, in theory. It should go down in theory, right? Correct. Right. It doesn't go down straight away, of course. Nobody knows, you know, when exactly it's going to come down. Everyone has forecasts and projections. And remember, they, the central banks only try to control inflation through um, you know, monetary policies like hiking, holding and cutting, right? And then it takes its time to work its way, you know, through, uh, the, through the data, right? So they have to try to look at both. They're looking at inflation and looking at GDP. And then they're saying to themselves, all right, what's the bigger threat at the moment? So they look at the GDP numbers and they'll say, well, okay, well, GDP is at, you know, we're, we're, we're at least positive, right? When it comes to, you know, potential growth. Yeah, we're in the positive territory because two negative quarters would be um, would be classed as a recession. So we haven't got a negative quarter at the moment. So with that, it's the lesser of two evils. So rather than either holding, yeah, and maybe trying to manage the economy, right, and hopefully give people a chance by not making things too expensive, but they run the risk of higher inflation, or hiking, yeah, trying to drive down inflation, but the, the knock-on effect with doing that is 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 also, when you think about it, is 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 hurting or, or maybe com, compiling or or, or uh, piling pressure on an already potentially struggling economy, right? Because what then tends to happen is what if you're you know a mortgage owner or you know you're a business owner. Right. And you already, you know, inflation is already at, let's say, for example, nine percent. Yeah. So your cost of living is coming down on top of that. Yeah. You have rising costs, rising borrowing costs. So if you're getting if you've got a you know, variable mortgage um, and, you, and the Bank of England are hiking rates, even if it is by maybe zero point two five percent. Yeah. That could be, you know, a, a lot of money. Yeah, for anyone who has, you know, a mortgage and especially that might be, I don't know, depending on, you know, the size of your mortgage or whatever it is, that could be anywhere from 50 pound to, you know, 200 pound, 300 pound, who knows, right? But that's less money in your pocket. And imagine they're doing that every uh, statement. So every three months, you're finding out that your mortgage is getting more and more and more expensive. Yeah. So then that, again, exacerbates the, 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 the cost of living crisis, right? So you've got a double whammy of rising borrowing and lending costs, yeah, as well as inflation. So again, as a central bank, what do you do? 
if you're a central banker and you're running the country, what do you what what is the lesser of two evils? Holding rates, yeah, or what's the bigger threat? So actually, no, I'll go back to the original question. So what do you think is the best scenario or the best? Uh, what would you do in that scenario? Would you would you can would you do you agree with what the bank's doing and hiking rates, or do you think that holding rates should have been the way to go? Mr. Diligent says increase rates. Anyone else? Marion said hi. Yeah, it is a losing battle. This is exactly it. And if you look at the definition, you know, of stagflation, you're right. Stagflation. Right. Stagflation is characterized by slow economic growth and relatively high un um, unemployment or economic stagnation. Uh, which is the same time accompanied by a rising, and then there was right. So here, no, here's his definition. I wanted to see, I wanted to find. So in economics, stagflation or recession, inflation is a situation in which uh, inflation rate is high, the economic growth rate slows, and unemployment remains steadily high. It presents a dilemma for economic policy. Right, that is the key. It's a dilemma. Yeah, it's a dilemma, right? So Daniel says increase rates if GDP can handle it. And that's exactly what they're doing, Daniel, right? That's the reason why, because at the moment, if you're looking at GDP, there it's still in, in the positive. Yes, it might be trending down, et cetera, but the fact that it's in the positive at the moment means that they're just all saying, do you know what? It's better that we try and hike now, yeah, and try to get inflation down because then by the time a recession does come if a recession does come yeah then at least we would have got inflation down because the worst thing you want to have is a recession right and inflation is way you know oh, oh he's done this again um and a recession is way um is is high because I don't know what you would want to call that, right? Inflation is, is still at 9% or 10% and rising, but yet you infl in the, you know, you're in a recession. That is just probably the worst scenario you, know, you could possibly be in. Yeah? Worst scenario to be in. Now, I say all that, yeah, to go on to you know, the fact that all central banks at the moment are pretty much in this scenario to varying degrees. Yeah, to varying degrees. Some are worse than others. Some have better GDP than others. Yeah, and some don't. Some have higher inflation than others. Yeah. So everyone's in the same scenario because there's, you know, potentially a global recession. But when it comes to deciding which is the dog with the least fleas, yeah, that's ultimately what we're trying to do in currency land yeah we're trying to see the differences and the divergences and to, again to keep it really really simple who's the best who is the best of the worst yeah who is the best of the worst and one of the currencies that i thought was you know is, is a sell yeah is the great british pound gbp yeah that is pretty much one of my uh sell trades now again i'm you know I, it's just an, a trade idea right it's just a trade idea i don't know where this is going to but if i'm looking at the pound and i'm looking at the issues that they have yeah the issues that they have in comparison to you know some other currencies like for example the dollar um you know like for example canada yeah the pound is the worst off out of those two. Are they the worst? No, but for me, they're one of the two. And one of the things that really, um, uh, I would say, uh, uh, solidifies this is, one second. Mm-hmm. Right. Sorry. Right. So in the UK channel, right, which is basically if you want to know about how well, you, you know, the, the UK is doing or whether you should be a buyer or a seller. One of the things you should be doing is reading up about, you know, what's happening in the economy. Right. This is this is 
you know, our, our research. And one of the things, one of the videos that um, uh, came out, which was quite interesting, was in fact the Bank of England to do less due to weak economy. And this was from Morgan Stanley. And pretty much it echoes really what I was thinking myself. And it's because, and let me just explain this quickly, is because, and you'll hear it from them, is that they can't hike as much, yeah, if they are facing a uh, a downturn, right? So generally, when you're on a on a on a when you're hiking rates, you generally it's what's known as a hiking cycle, and a hiking cycle can last for you know months and even you know a year or two, yeah. So central banks generally don't just hike once. They hike, you know, three, four, five, six, seven times, eight times, et cetera, right? Depending on how, what happens with, the, uh, with, with inflation. Now, when you have a scenario where inflation is at, you know, 9%, for example, very, very high, and obviously you're looking for that 2% target. But GDP, right, as I said, you know, if you're hiking rates, the hikes have to be able to, you know, the, the economy has to be able to support hikes. The, the, the problem is, is that if you hike too aggressively, it could send your economy into a recession quicker. Yeah, because it's compounding the, um, the, the, the economic effects that come with rising borrowing costs and rising inflation at the same time. Yeah. So the Bank of England are very, very aware of this. So they don't want to hike too much because, again, as I said, they could compound the problems uh, of the economy. Yeah. So that was my thinking going into the um, the fact that, you know, we had rising inflation, but the pound I was saying was still a sell. Yeah. Welcome, Jarbread, by the way. Is Jarbread still in here? Yeah, Jarbread, welcome. Um, and blessings. Yeah, right. So the reason why I was also short on this was because I understood that the, the, the Bank of England have a massive headache on their hands, yeah, because they don't want to kill the economy before it's actually got started, yeah. And although, as we know, generally hikes – yeah, rate hikes are generally positive for a currency. In this scenario, in this scenario, in fact, sorry, rising inflation, right, and which leads to hikes is positive. In this scenario, it's not so much because of the effects that hikes are going to have on GDP. Yeah, so it's really, really important that you understand the relationship between all three. Everything else is just, you know, leads to this scenario. So whether you're watching retail, whether you're watching home builders, whether you're watching wage growth, you know, whatever, right? It all leads back to these, the relationship between these three. So, and again, as I was saying, what typically happens, yep, that would, you know, tend to typically appreciate a currency, yeah? But because rate hikes at this moment in time are probably hurting GDP and the Bank of England know this. The Bank of England are basically saying now, in fact, we probably may not be able to hike as much as we want to hike because if we do hike and hike too much, too aggressively, we're going to go into a recession quicker. Yeah. So if we go back to the UK channel, go back to the UK channel, again, the headline is Bank of England to do less due to weak UK economy, right? And it's only a minute long, and but I'll play this for you. Yeah, I'll play it. I'll try and play it loud. A lot of focus on the Bank of England this week because of, uh, there's a lot of data coming out on the UK today. We've had labour markets, tomorrow CPI, and the market seems to be pricing in more rate hikes this morning than they were just yesterday uh, because of the strength of the labour market. And what did you make of that narrative? Right. So again. Everything we've spoken about, because of high inflation, the market is, they're saying that the market is pricing in those potential hikes because the, the, the theory goes and what we would typically see is higher 
in, um, higher inflation should lead to, you know, more rate hikes. Yeah, that's what typically happens. But again, the headline being a weak economy, you'll start to see and understand, and as I've explained as well, why, in fact, Morgan Stanley are actually taking the other side of that trade, which is this. Yeah, so we have a different view at Morgan Stanley. We think the Bank of England is ultimately going to do less uh, on the hiking side because the economy will ultimately be weaker. So, um, you know, but today's data doesn't fit that narrative as uh, maybe well as we would have liked, but it's just one data point. And we do think UK consumers are still being hit with a very significant cost of living increase. You still have some major uncertainties around trade and the evolution of, of Brexit. And you still have, you know, some energy uh, uh, uncertainty. So we think all of that will ultimately drive a, a weaker consumer backdrop in the UK, which will ultimately mean the Bank of England does not hike as much as the market currently expects. There you are. Right. There you are. Now, who am I? Right. I'm just Leon Rowe here in, you know, what I mean, in my in my home telling you, you know, what my theory is right i'm not you know the, the smartest of the smart you know yeah, but you are ambassador of kwan <laughs> <laughs> Show me the money man come on <laughs> <laughs> right and this is just <laughs> this is just one trade idea right i could be wrong about this and also as well there is market timing right because sometimes you can have a trade idea many times we have trade ideas that don't necessarily play out when we want them to, because timing is a very important part of our trading, right? Because we're trying to time highs and time lows. So we're trying to time turning points. But, you know, my opinion on, 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 on the pound is that it has further to fall. And again, if you, understand, if you, if you look through, you know, cut through the, um, I guess, the, the, the headlines and understand, for example, you know, some of the quotes that we're seeing and even from the, the, the Bank of England themselves, right, talking about, you know, significant shocks. So the Bank of England governor, Andrew Bailey, reiterated that those risks uh, when told UK lawmakers on Monday, a significant income shock was playing out in the UK, which would ultimately push up unemployment, right? So that's, that's yet to happen. But this is, these, these are the smart of the smart guys. These are the smartest guys in the room right and it's it's again you see here right so markets are still pricing in a strong degree of tightening in the uk even after bank of england flagged increasing risks of a recession in its mpc meeting um in its last mpc meeting right so the bank of england are saying basically what i'm saying here yeah the the, the, the risk of a recession increases as faster the more hikes you you do but they have the problem of you know what i mean what do they do with inflation because if if you know if interest rates are at what what's what's the bank of england interest rates at the moment is it one percent something like that i think is it one percent guys if it's at one percent let's say right but that isn't and, and inflation is still going higher then the conundrum is that okay what do they do do they do they hold rates or do they still continue to high crates and potentially compound recession or bring the recession forward? This is the headache. This is the problem that they have. Now, it's our problem as well, but our, it's our job as traders is how do we make money from this? How do we make money from this trade idea? Yeah. Do you buy the pound? Yeah. Do you buy the pound based off of rate hikes? Or do you, you know, continued rate hikes and what the market is potentially pricing in until it doesn't? Or do you maybe try to get ahead of the story and risk maybe being maybe a few steps ahead and maybe, you know, having to um, mistime the market at certain levels? So one second, right? Because ultimately, what are we doing as, as traders, right? Or what am I, what's my approach? My approach is this, yeah? Is let's say, for example, I'm, I'm you know, I've got short on the... Uh, Pound New Zealand, right? Pound New Zealand. Oh, sorry. Right, that's where we are. Now, so what I'm doing, and I say this all the time, this is just from a supply and demand perspective. I've already got my bias, so I'm looking to short the pound. Yeah, so I know that that's the direction I'm playing in. Now, 
because my bias is to the short side, I'm only looking for short trades. Now, I have no idea whether, you know, the first trade I take in this trade idea is going to net me a thousand pips or not, right? I have no idea. Yeah. It might not even work out there, right? It might just go down a little bit and I might get stopped out. But ultimately, if I'm right about this trade idea, and even if I'm wrong about this trade idea, there's always going to be pullbacks to make money from, right? That's, you know, here's, here's, here's what I'm, you know, um, people think that, you know, if you're wrong about a trade idea that you still can't make money because there's always going to be pullbacks. But the point is, is that if my bias is to the short side, all I'm looking at is taking those types of setups. I mean, I'm taking stop hunts that, that, that go in the direction of short trades. Yeah. And whether I, whether I, whether I make money and whether I don't, when I do make money or when the trade idea does play out, then I should hopefully make, you know, 10, 15, 20 to one type trades, right. Or even more hopefully and swing trade these. Yeah. So, so, it's not, it's, it's our job as traders to pick a direction and see where the potential downside is and whether this is, you know, a bargain for the New Zealand dollar, yeah, and whether the market agrees with us or if not, if the market doesn't agree that that's a, that's a bargain, then maybe it might be the next level up. It might be the next trade up. But ultimately, if we're right about this trade idea and we can capitalize from it, then we should have lots of downside, you know, potential.